Hi, and welcome to this week's Midweek Message. It is Wednesday, the 3rd of August, 2022. There's a group of people from our church who are reading through the Bible this year. If you're in that group, you know you're more than halfway through because it's August. I can also assure you that if you're one of that group, or if you've done it before in the past, there are times that reading through the Bible is an eye-opening experience. Because when you read it, especially cover to cover, there's a lot of stuff in there that's surprising. There's corruption, murder, sexual escapades, political intrigue, all sorts of other human hijinks and failures. And reading through the Bible can be a shocking, sometimes disorienting experience, especially if you haven't read big swaths of the scripture before. When we think about reading the Bible, many times what we think about are reading the Gospels, where we hear Jesus uh, stories about Jesus healing people, restoring the sick and the outcast. Or we think about Jesus challenging, teaching, and confronting us with his demanding way of discipleship. Or else we think of the letters in the New Testament that teach a newborn church how to live faithfully in life when it gets complicated. Or we think about the beautiful poetry of the Psalms or the succinct wisdom of the Proverbs. Why, though, does this book contain so many puzzling texts and ideas? How do we wrestle with the scripture and maintain our trust in its truthfulness when there's so much that's distressing and sometimes hard to comprehend? I think sometimes it's the way that we read the Bible and the approach that we take in the first place. When we read the Bible, I think there are a few things, now this isn't an exhaustive list, but I think there are a few things that we should keep in mind as we read and study the scripture. The first thing is this, although we call the Bible a book, it's actually a collection of 66 different books written over 1,500 years. That's a long time. And this book contains history, poetry, letters, prophecy, gospels, wisdom, proverbs, all these different things, all these different genres, which each have a little bit of a different message to give to us. The Bible also, in those 1,500 years and in those 66 books, reflects a lot of cultural change and situational differences that need to be discerned as we read the scripture because the authors were writing into various contexts over the years. There's a second thing that's helpful for us to remember as we read the scripture. It's that the, since the Bible was written over such a long time, there's not only a variation in style, but there's also a variation in authorial perspective. When we read the Bible, 1,500 years worth of it, we find that the challenges, the situations, the cultural moments, the political situations, and the personal struggles, challenges, and temptations change and evolve over time, and they reflect the culture in which they were written. We sometimes think of like biblical culture, but the reality is, as we think about reading the Bible, we should think about the cultures in which the Bible was written. It's not one monoculture, but it's a series and a number of culture cultures over the centuries. Finally, there's one more thing. That in the midst of such variety of texts and perspectives, and over such a great amount of time, there is still a central and guiding theme. And it's this. For in the midst of human failures and foibles, God is at work. To read the Bible as a collection of human stories is, quite frankly, depressing. To read it as God's revelation to human beings is the key to comprehending the Bible's overall message. And it's also what helps us to see it as a book that's hopeful and helpful. In 1928, the theologian Karl Barth wrote about his awakening as he was reading the scripture and it transformed the way he thought about it. It transformed the way he lived out his entire life of faith. He wrote this book, it was called uh, The Word of God and the Word of Man. And in it, he had an important essay that was called The Strange New World Within the Bible. And here's part of what he wrote. He said, it's not the human thoughts about God which form the content of the Bible, but the right divine thoughts about men. The Bible tells us not how we should talk with God, but what he says to us. Not about how we find the way to you, but how he has sought and found his way to us. Not right relation in which we must place ourselves to him, but the covenant he has made with all who are Abraham's spiritual children 
and which he has sealed once and for all in Jesus Christ. It is this which is within the Bible. The word of God is within the Bible. In essence, what Bart is saying is something fairly simple. He's saying that the economy of God that we discover in the Bible, quite frankly, is weird. Grace and mercy abound, but it's a difficult and a challenging grace because it reaches so far that it makes us feel uncomfortable. It's offered to the compromised and the broken. It's offered to those who are sinful and fallen. It's given only as a gift that can never be earned. And the Bible tells that story again and again. Today's poem comes to us from Malcolm Geit. He is an Anglican priest in England and also a fairly accomplished poet. In this poem that's called The Lectern, Geit speaks about the reverence and seriousness of reading scripture in public, the word of God, leading in worship. And in this poem, he speaks of something that could be done almost glibly, reading aloud, but instead he describes it as a powerful and sacred task. Again, the poem is called The Lectern, and the poet is Malcolm Geit. Some rise on eagles' wings. This one is plain. Plain English workmanship in solid oak. Age gracefully, it says. Go with the grain. You walk towards an always open book, open as every life to every light, open to shade and shadow, day and night, the challenge, the changeless witness of your changing plan, changing pain. Be still, the lectern says. Stand here and read. Here are your mysteries, your love and fear, and running through them all, the slender thread of God's strange grace, red as these ribbons, red as your own blood when reading reads you, when reading reads you here and pierces joint and marrow. So you stand, the lecter lectern still beneath your trembling hand. Our prayer today comes from the Liturgy, liturgy of St. James, which is an Eastern rite, and the Liturgy of St. James is still used today all over the world. Let's pray. O God, who has caused to echo in us thy divine and saving words, illuminate our souls, sinners though we are, for the understanding of those things which have been read and taught to us before this time, that we may be seen to be not only hearers of thy spiritual hymns, but doers of good works, and so achieve an undisguised faith, a life without reproach, and a blameless citizenship in Christ our Lord, with whom thou art blessed along with thy most holy and good and life-giving spirit, now and forever, for ages and ages. Amen. Everyone, I hope that you have a great week. I hope that you see you on Sunday. You can join us online. You can join us in person, 9 o'clock, 10.30. 9 o'clock, of course, is traditional. 10.30 Southridge. All right. Hope you have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.